All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy October. I hope you're doing amazing so far today. I'm very excited because October is one of my favorite months of the year, although I say that about every month of the year, not gonna lie. Halloween in particular is one of my favorite holidays. I'm a huge movie nerd, like I, I love movie music. I love to nerd out about film scores. Today we're going to be rating my top five picks of my favorite Halloween songs and why I chose them. So I actually made a little bit of a criteria list so that I can rate them all equally and fairly with the criteria as being how well the music actually fits to the film or the TV show, how imaginative or how creative the music score is, how iconic or how memorable the music themes are, as well as having a deeper look into the instrumentation of what those specific instruments that the composers chose could mean for that Halloween feel in the music. So we're going to do a little bit of an interpretation analysis according to me as a classical musician. You would be surprised, there's actually not that many Halloween themed music scores out there. So I did my best. Definitely drop in the comments down below if you have any additions to this. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to have more videos like this. Let's dive into it. <laughs> So first up, it is Harry Potter's Hedwig's Theme by John Williams. This theme you can hear throughout the whole Harry Potter franchise, and John Williams really outdid himself on creating an iconic movie soundtrack. I mean, this soundtrack shaped my childhood, not gonna lie. Let's listen to it. Ring a bell? All right, so if it rings a bell, now you know which one I mean. So right off the bat, the beginning starts with a glockenspiel instrument. So the glockenspiel is an instrument that has a lot of this mysterious feel simply because it sounds like a faraway memory. Also, Hedwig's theme starts off with a constant E ostinato. So that's sort of like an underlying E right? <laughs> it makes it a little more compelling and sort of compels you to keep listening because it just carries you through the first few seconds already. So as soon as the violins launch in, this is actually incredibly difficult to play on the violin because it's just so fast, like it's just so fast to have every single note articulated like that, but making it sound like one continuous chain is incredibly difficult. So hats off to that violin section. Those continuous lines really remind me of magical broomsticks flying through the air, stuff like that. That main theme is being carried by the horns, with Gryffindor being the main house, if that makes sense, for Harry and the, the main characters of the movie. I think this makes a lot of sense. In my opinion, it hints a little bit at that adventurous and heroic feel of House Gryffindor, but that's just my interpretation. A lot of Hedwig's theme also incorporates a lot of chromaticism. This is actually something that I've realized throughout all of these creepier songs. Chromatic scales or chromatic elements can really incite a very urgent or uncomfortable feel within music. And that is something that is heavily used in horror or enchanting magic, magical movies. That's also very insisting. When this military-esque section comes in, that really also, again, is portrayed by the wind instruments, which lends that moment a very authoritative or proud character. It's almost like a little pushy at times. And then of course, the violins and like the string instruments coming back in, creating even more turmoil and more magical enchantedness. Now, next up to number four, I chose the Addams Family theme. This iconic TV theme was written by Vic Mizzy. So if you are unfamiliar with the Addams Family, it's one of the most iconic sitcoms of US TV history. So it's definitely worth a watch. It is so charming. It's, it's more funny and humorous rather than creepy, which I actually really appreciate. To be completely honest, if it wasn't for my sister, I wouldn't even know about the Addams Family. So let's give it a listen. <laughs> Such a tear. Mysterious and spooky. They're all together. Okay. The Adams family. It's so charming. Like it's iconic. So the Adams family theme is a great example that Halloween or horror themed 
movies don't have to be creepy and scary all the time but what these festivities really are about is the association to like strange characters and like feeling like something's otherworldly and that's what i love about this theme in particular and what i think is particularly amazing is that how simple it is it's pretty much just an out of tune piano with some singing and some snapping like it's not much more than that maybe a harpsichord or something, but you get the idea. With these simple elements, Beckmizzi was able to create a very iconic and very descriptive soundtrack that really honors the series. And I think that's the whole point. So yeah, it was, it's, I think it's great. This is also the only major key song that we're going to be covering today. So it definitely honors the fourth place. Now, next up on third place, it's actually a song that I knew from listening, but I never knew where it was from. And that is John Carpenter's Michael Myers theme from the movie Halloween. And I'm seriously creeped out by this movie, but it is a classic and the music is really, really recognizable. So here we go. You listen to it, it could be either a 5 4 beat or a 3 4 plus 2 4 beat because it could be a 1 2 3 4 5, 1 2 3 4 5, or it could be a 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 beat. I think it is a 5 4 beat, which is very unusual. What we're mostly used to is a 1 2 3 4, 1 2 3 4, or a 1 2 3, 1 2 3, right? A 3 4 beat. But here it's a 5 4 beat, which creates a destabilized like offbeat type of feel also because the phrases are stretched over two bars so it like sort of stretches you along and then that's where the tonality changes and that's what makes us feel like that phrase is over and then it's the next two bars two bars so it's in two bar sections if, if you will so these two bars feel really long and it sort of makes you hold your breath because you're awaiting until the next tonality. Another thing that sort of keeps your attention going is that flickering electronic sound. It's a electronic computer type of instrument. Yeah, it's so well done. And that is actually already very destabilizing in our feel. This flicker incites a paranoia. So at the end of this soundtrack, you almost forget about this flicker until it's the only thing left and then you're reminded of it and that paranoia has been consistent this whole time. So that is pretty genius in my opinion. In addition, what holds our breath for so long is this electronic ostinato at the bottom. So this bass line is dum, bum, bum, chromatic, you know, that as well. It definitely keeps the tension and like that anticipation going. So it definitely fits the mood of Halloween, the movie, because you definitely feel like you need to be on your tiptoes after listening to this soundtrack. Now, before we get into the next one, which is the runner up, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you like this type of content. And again, like if you feel like there's a horror or Halloween song that I completely missed out on, please write it in the comments below because I love talking about movie music in general and just like get a discussion started. So definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell. Maybe even give this video a thumbs up, would be awesome. And let's get into the next one. Now, next up is Coraline, which is a stop motion animation directed by Henry Selig. And the soundtrack that I chose is actually just the end credits scene composed by Bruno Coulet. So he's a French composer. And I know it's just the end credits, but I find it the most enchanting and, and very representative of the Coraline storyline. So let's give it a listen and then I'll give you my two cents on it. Love it. So good. So right off the bat, a lot of active like pizzicato happening on strings. So actually I'm gonna get my bag. So there's two ways that this could have gone and I think it's the latter. First being the violinists each individually playing the notes. So sort of like that. I can really only play one note at a time if I do this type of technique. But I think that's why they were actually alternating instruments. The first one being 
on the beats and the second one being off beat. I was like breathing. <laughs> because otherwise, if an individual violinist plays both lines, it can sometimes sound a little bit like irregular. And I think the whole point of this was that it sounds very, very like streamlined and therefore persisting. But in general, the pizzicato beginning for the strings, it already gives this sort of like tiptoey, secretive, creepy feel that really fits the Coraline storyline. Because, you know, like she finds a secret door and all her adventures begin. So when the vocals come in, so this sounds like French, but it isn't. It's actually all just gibberish, which I think is so creative and so interesting because Bruno Coulet is a French composer, so he's also bringing his own his own touch into it. Um, but yeah, I had French in school. This is definitely just gibberish, <laughs> but it does the trick. It feels like a riddle to solve. Also, the fact that the choir is pretty much just whispering or having a hoarse voice really, really suits this sort of secretive journey. Yeah, and this choir to the I just envision an army of kids that have been compelled to sing. Like it's very creepy in my mind. No matter how specific or small the subdivisions are of the rhythm, which is taka 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 taka, you know, the very fast paced, like squaring around type of feel, there's still elements that really carry the line. So there's a few bars where the choir has a very broad type of phrasing as well, which sounds like this. Love the gibberish. A lot of chromaticism going na 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 na. All in all, I think very creative soundtrack. It really suits the mood. It has a clear message of what it was meant to do. It has a touch of the composer, which I love. Now, is it memorable or iconic enough? I would say it has potential. Also, I personally believe that tiptoey music themes, they just don't have as much of an impact in terms of memorability, but it really suits it. So it's really well done, but not as iconic, in my opinion. All in all, very well done. I, I love this soundtrack. It is very well deserving on the runner up uh, second position. Now, best for last. It really is a great soundtrack and my friends agreed to that. I would love to know your opinion, but that is director Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. The song being This Is Halloween by Danny Elfman. And I'm so excited about this one. I've actually created a cover a few years ago because I love that one so much. I'm thinking of redoing this cover and making it a longer version. You can imagine how I internally lost it when I actually got to meet Danny Elfman, the composer. <sighs> Genius. So let's give it a listen. Honestly, the whole reason I'm creating this video today is inspired by this particular song. So right off the bat, the rhythm is very downbeat. It's very heavy. This downbeat feel can definitely also contribute to a very intimidating feel. I also imagine this to be a door knock, so very insisting, like banging on the door, which I find ties in very well with the whole storyline because there's a lack of privacy in the Nightmare Before Christmas world because there's so many characters, there's so many uh, enchanting figures. And that already sets the tone for the whole musical work. Now you can also hear some bells every now and then, which definitely gives it like midnight clock like doomsday vibes it also goes from the G minor to the G sharp minor a type of chromaticism if you will like it definitely has a lot of chromaticism in the rest of the piece as well but particularly in the beginning going from G minor to a G sharp minor that in itself is sort of like heightening your senses and heightening your alarm response if that makes sense now when the bandonian comes in which I don't know if I'm saying this right in English it gives a very foreign type of strange feel in a compelling or like almost, dare I say, like seductive way. That definitely can contribute to the magic of this world. Let's keep listening. Everyone hail to the pumpkin soul. In this town, don't we love it? 
Also, the way that the vocalists sing, they portray each character so individually, it's so theatrical, which is, of course, very on brand for an animation. Both the vocal aspect as well as the instrumental aspect are paired perfectly, in my opinion, and represent each unique character, making the whole song feel like a whole movie in itself, to be honest. Love it. Here as well, again, chromaticism. Now you know. Na, 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 na. In, in the Halloween Michael Myers theme, there are no voices, of course, but it's also very monotone. I mean, they're also using electronic music, so of course it's more modern. But as far as the instrumental music goes, such as This is Halloween, it's much more colorful in that sense and gives you a whole picture of the movie. Um, so it has a different purpose, it has a totally different effect, but it still is iconic. And that I find is what Danny Elfman did so well. It's very clear what characters he was trying to portray and he did so extremely successfully. It totally fits the mood. So there's a reason why him and Tim Burton like keep working together on movies. So. <laughs> One thing that all of these musical pieces have in common is those stretched, almost hopeful phrases are really what keep us engaged when listening to the music, in my opinion. All right, so this summarizes my top five picks of the Halloween songs that I will be listening to on repeat the whole month of October. <laughs> now, if you have specific Halloween songs that you would like to share in the comments below, please do so because otherwise I'm just going to be listening to the same five songs all month. And if you do celebrate Halloween, please let me know what you're going at. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you liked today's video. I hope you have an amazing day ahead of you and I hope to see you next time. Bye! <laughs>